Hello everybody. Beautiful spring. Snow's not quite all melted yet, but you know, some places it has, but anyway, two little bear trapping and beaver trap in the spring. Uh, I did some last year, so I kind of got an idea what to do now. Um, but anyway, so very similar to a big game hunter. You put out a barrel. This is filled with some popcorn. I tether it to a tree. This is years of bear guiding that we learned this. So you tether it to a tree high up so they can't tip this over. The worst they can do is just roll it around the tree and stuff. Okay. Then, then that's how they get their popcorn. A lot of you think, oh, that's not enough, that's not enough. Trust me, that's more than enough. Anyway, so the big bear will just come, stick his head right in. The cubs will come in and out and everything, and all the other bears will feed down there. Some deep fryer oil, just to get a little more smell going. If you were here, you could really smell the popcorn. But anyway, we're gonna go do some beaver and bear trapping, throw in a few raccoon skunks, maybe an otter. So stay tuned. It's spring 2023. Let's go trapping. Okay, I just threw the oil in. And uh, so anyway, you can see it's rolling out of there now. And um, But anyway, for clarification, this is not the trap. This is just a bait. All I'm doing is bringing them in the area. And then the trap will be set up on this tree or that tree or something. Later on, this is just getting them baited. And then when they start coming in, then we'll actually set the traps. So I'll explain and show all those in a second. But that's all this is, just pre-baiting. Yeah, you're on now. Okay. Take a five gallon pail with a lid on it. You can see that some of the bears got already. So all we do is take a jigsaw or any kind of saw. You get a cut right here, make a circle, cut back, and you're gonna cut down into here. So we start. circle then you do is you cut a couple little notches here like this and you do one two three four five and then those lift up and then the snare sits around here so That's not a prep can, pail. Can you flip them up so they, yeah, yeah, like that. All right, they figured that out. Yeah, that's, that's how cool. you prep a five-gallon pail. And the snare gets well ensconced. Yeah, under we're these gonna clips. We'll show the snare setup, but that's how you get your pails ready. That's all you're doing for them. Good to go. Okay, it's been a couple days now since we put the bait out. No bears have come yet. See, a lot of the snow's melted off already, but just a little early for bears. Okay. So we're doing those, we're gonna get the actual bear snare set. So this is the M15 bear snare. So what I do is I have a heavy duty chunk of chain. This is overkill, but 5 16 3 8 chain kind of stuff. It's tethered around a tree. That tree is 10 inches or so at the base. Good, solid, healthy spruce tree. I just take a wire, I hold that up just to keep the weight of the chain. Okay, so then the pail, you've seen how to make that already. So what we do is... 
there's two components to these. Can you hold that for yeah. a sec and just keep yeah. on my hands there? So there's two components to these. One is the trigger and one is the thrower spring. Okay, so the thrower spring is this guy. So these are just my coyote cables and you tether it high up in the tree just through the spring like you would a power ram, okay? This just allows it to be found after a bear is caught. But that basically is a power ram. Very similar, yeah. Okay, and then your trigger, same thing as well, is I have it tethered and on there, it's a spike with a bend chunk of beaver on there is what I use, okay? So then what you do is this spring has the, I guess the platform or whatever, and then the spring. So the platform goes inside the bucket into that notch there. It's tight, you push on it, there it goes, and it will support the spring on the bucket like that, okay? Then you take your trigger, and the way it works is the bear's going to reach in and he's going to be a bear. He's going to just hook his hand and he's going to pull. He's going to reach in he's going to pull this. So if you want to come right here, uh, video right here. So what we do is you put this in and this goes on this knob and this goes on that part there. So as he in set position, you just go right inside there. As he goes and reaches in, he pulls down on it, which releases this off of that, which throws a spring. And then I'll show you the snare, how it's set in there. So all you do is we just give her a good squeeze. Okay, release our safety. Now it's set. I'm just gonna get this cable a little out of the way here. There we go. Okay, then our snare is on the other end of the chain. I use a big heavy duty D-link. These are the snares that come with them, 3 8 cable on a lock, okay? This third little prong is where you put the end of the snare. And that's why I take the weight of the chain off. So it sits there nice and gentle, just like that. These little tabs that we made, I just kind of pull them out a little and I open up the snare and I just kind of push it inside these little tabs. And you can see just the tension of, the smear, of that snare itself holds them in there nicely. Okay, so there is a ready to go bear snare. So when he reaches in and he pulls on that trigger where that chunk of bear meat, or beaver meat is, that's what throws the spring, closes it on his hand, and then he's, cable, or he's chained to this tree. Um, just for extra, I throw a little bit of dog food in there, a little splash of vanilla, whatever you feel like doing. They're bears, they don't care. Uh, and that's basically it. And when you come... And there's the cat food with vanilla on it, with yeah, the beaver. That's correct. And then when you come, this pail's gonna be off the tree. I just nail it on, you can screw it on, whatever, but they get wrecked every time. If there's a second bear, which I found out the hard way, they'll run away with this trigger. That, there will be a bear caught here, and the other one with that trigger and the chunk of beaver, he'll run away. So that's why you have to tether your trigger and your spring so that you can find both after. Uh, and that's basically it. There's not a lot to them. We have our bait 15 feet away, give or take. So any bear that comes by, you know, smelling the oil and the popcorn, he's definitely gonna come check this out. And that's how you catch a bear. Uh, it's quite simple. And uh, so now we just gotta catch a bear for everybody to see. So that's it, that's bear trapping. Pretty simple. And it's fun. The skinny part, not so much, but. Very good. We're good. Okay. It's a nice brew. Yes, nice. it is. Beautiful, dude.
God damn it. God damn, he's huge. He's old, bro. You want me to walk over there? Shit, dude. God damn. Okay, we're just gonna... Okay, this won't be a long video, but... Here's the bear bait. And... Who we got today? So, there's one there. So put him down, and I got a bear to skin today. So, second bear of the year. Okay, so back at the spot that everybody see me set. Obviously, snow's all melted and everything. <laughs> so when you get to a spot, and the barrel used to be right here. It's swung around the tree. You can see. Whole bunch of it's eaten and i've got this which isn't going to show up worth the crap on the camera but i've got this amazing trail going in and out of here also right there so obviously the bears are here now you'll see sometimes and it was the cameras this year that helped me figure out what's going on so the bear snare is snapped off but nothing's caught and that's it so what this is is cubs so it's good that you're not catching them, but it's a sow and cubs. So the sow goes to the barrel, and then the cubs are just being cubs, being little dickheads actually. As Rich and Sandy say, bears are dicks. Well, they start off small being dicks. So anyway, that's where, that's what it looks like, is they crawl around here, they bat at it and everything, and it snaps them, scares the crap out of them, and off they go. Okay, so. After you make your initial cuts, get the legs skinned out. I'll show you that a little bit there in a second. This is the kind of special equipment I was telling you about. Block and tackle is what most people use. I'm spoiled, I got some forestry stuff, but this is how I skin the rest out. Okay, and then I case skin the, the head out. I know it's hard to tell the things swirling around and everything. But that's the back I gotta do yet. And then the head gets case skinned. And then I always do it over top of some wood. So as the fur starts to fall, hit the ground, I don't get it full of dirt and grass. Just keep it cleaner. So that's uh, the way to skin them. Okay, the bear's all skinned out now. So, what I do is my opening cuts come to the heel and on the front comes to right here on the palm, on the wrist, I guess. Okay, and then what I do is when I'm skinning all four of them, I split at the joint. Then I just quickly debone it out and that's how I leave it. Then what I do is, you know, on my skinning rack, just like hanging a coyote or something. Now I have something to hold it. And then what I'll do is I'll wrap the string around there and then it holds the weight of the, the hide and then I can skin up the feet. That I do when it's time to flesh. Otherwise you can see it's a rough skin. All four feet are still in it. The head's been removed, just skinned out. And you can see right in the center of the chest. All I do is I draw a line and go from one wrist to the other. And then that's as far up as I split. 
the head stays cased. And that's a generic skin. Um, any taxidermist for any reason, if they want to do full mount or rug, they have everything they need to work with here. Uh, the fur guys just want the fur. That gives them that, you know, everything, all the users, basically it's there. Uh, the next question I'm gonna get is dispatch. 22 Magnum, right there in the chest. That's it. Very close range though. I walk right up to the bear and shoot him in the chest. That's it. Uh, very fast. You don't need to be an American and bring out a bazooka because all you're doing is putting holes in your skin. Okay, it's just like with a coyote or anything else that you shoot, that's called damage. Okay, with this 22 mag mark, uh, you can see it's just a little bit of jelly on there. But anyway, I'll flush that off. You will just see a little red spot on the skin, not even a stitch required. No exit holes, just one shot and they're dead. Okay, very quick, very humane. You don't need a bazooka. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of bears in a nutshell. Like I said, the flushing video, forget it. You guys don't want to sit here for eight hours watching me pick away at something. It's just... It's monotonous, so. But that's it, that's a bear. From catching them, setting them, baiting them, to skinning them, and then everything's good to go after that. So have fun out there, go get some bears if you can. Another thing, uh, in terms of marketing, you can get these tanned and sell them yourself if you want, but if you send them into the auction, uh, the majority of our black bears, spring especially, um, nice heavy furred black bear, uh, well, not the queen anymore, but the king's guard. The, one, the guys with the big, tall black hats in front of the palace. Okay, that's uh, bear fur. And the way it was explained to me is a royal decree that it has to come from Canada. It has to come from a Canadian trapper. So the majority of our black bears go to make those hats. So they go for royalty, literally. <clears throat> then the other one is there is a small fur trade. Other people will buy some fur bears. Then there is a taxidermy trade. That is why we have to do a complete skin, flesh, everything. Le by law, legally, the bears cannot enter Ontario unless they're deemed complete. That means all four feet, head, everything, okay? You can't just cut the feet off and send it in like a coyote for fur. They have to be done complete or they're not allowed in the province. Uh, anyway, so that's another one. So your big bears, your browns, all kinds of goofy colored ones, you name it. That's a lot of the taxidermy market. And then the third market will uh, be for claws. Uh, apparently, I think it's Asia or something, but there's a, a big market for claws. So the bears that aren't well furred, um, rubbed out, uh, damaged, whatever, those will go for the claw market. And uh, so, yeah, but that's what they use all the bears for. All the bears sell. Um, this is spring of 2023. I've been watching bears for quite a few years and they always average between two and $300. Uh, Canadian per bear so you know you get a couple good ones in there you get a couple bad ones but you should get a couple three hundred dollars um, everybody's like well that's a lot of work yeah it's a lot of work but what else you got to do you know go skin a bear and flesh a bear and it's a nice evening just sitting there in the flushing beam and I guess that's me though I don't mind sitting on the flushing beam but you know it still works out okay you only make a few dollars on bears so yeah that's kind of what they're marketed for that's what you do with them and uh, yeah go get them I don't know if that's going to come through, but there's a bear staring at me. He's, if you see the water, and then the grass, and then right at the bush line, there's a bear right there. It's a little spot in the middle. It's a young little bear, and he's sitting there just watching. The back goes over here, digging up some beaver dams, and there's a bear just staring at him. You can see him moving a little bit. Yeah, he's kind of a dark cinnamon color. Young, young bear. So anyway, from that picture, it looks like I'm in the middle of the bush, but <laughs> it's farmland. You know, it's Southern Saskatchewan bears. They're in the farmland now. If you're in a hunting zone for bears, like a big game hunting zone, that's basically the law is if you're a South Saskatchewan trapper, uh, under your fur license, you're allowed to trap bears in the zones where there is an active big game bear season. So if you are in a zone, wherever you are, look at your big game regs. And if you have a open season for uh, like a bear that you could buy bear tags, 
you go nuts and uh, you can go trapping bears.